Report to the company building immediately to sell your scrap metal and other goods. You we... Um... We... We lost... Merrick. And Cassie and... Uh, they... I'll, um... Start from the beginning. We were doing well enough that we got access to a more dangerous moon and put a lot of money into it. I guess it's to offset company losses as they expect the equipment not to come back. Um, I, I, th I think... I think the company can go fuck itself. Sorry. Um, anyway. We made up plans as best we could. Merrick and River had shovels. Cassie had found a weird bottle that we think is a homemade flashbang thing. Just as well we're treating it like that because it didn't look safe to drink. Scan said it was some kind of explosive, so I think at best it would give you a bad tummy, but probably a lot worse. I wanted to come inside too, but we had to have someone on the ship to look for turrets. You watch over us well, River had said. Anything they said could immediately put me at ease. And I wanted... I wanted to do so well for them. All of them. It's not even been a month and they're the best crew I think I'd ever get. Well, they were. I... It was so cold. I could feel it at the front of the ship. I even took the fancy tablecloth we had and wrapped it around me before grabbing the bedsheets next to me. I was so cold. I realised later I'd grabbed... Rivers. They... They... That's probably why I felt so safe in there. Ah... Uh, anyway... Merrick was telling me about a couple of the explorers who got lost there. They sounded interesting, albeit people who had far too much money to make such a self-serving adventure to a place they had no business trying to lay claim to. Money makes people think they can own fate, but nature and other creatures definitely have ideas about that. I guess if you have enough money you can build a thing that will slowly destroy a planet. Maybe that's why so many rich people hate the environment. The only thing that can stand against them. I think that's what happened to these moons. Why the factories are so big. Trying to fight against the land they were put on like some kind of money-draining virus. Or I guess rich people put them here so they could send out poor people like us to do their work. You have enough money, you can just pay others to die. Sometimes fast, but mostly slowly. Cassie never got too serious about anything. She'd listen to stuff we said and kind of acknowledge it, but mostly like to talk about brighter things. Like wildlife and punk music. River liked that too, but they were more quiet. I think they'd been in this enough to not kind of, kind of get attached to people. <laughs> That's bad for me, I, I always do. Even the rough ones, kind of, like Terran. Nobody I knew ever yawned as much as Terran did, and it'd make them long and theatrical too, so it was kind of like working with some kind of constantly sleepy sea lion. I think he got the better end of the deal where he ended up than Eric did. Uh, sorry, I, I don't like, um saying that. Excuse me a second. Okay. <laughs> Needed a moment. Rend is awful. Cold, barely visible outside. The wind hides anything moving around, so you don't see it till it's right there and the snow's so thick that they're out during the day, too. They'll get you. I watched them all go, with their flashlights. Before they even left the walkway, I could barely see them. I had turned the floods on, but... Every bit of wind that hit felt like those forest keepers again. Booms. Shakes. Strange howls as the wind changed and rattled the ship. I watched them on the camera. I could see all of them at once but switched between them all just to make sure everything was still working. They got lucky that the path to the entrance was clear. I saw something briefly red on the screen but it went the other way. They got inside and said it was a mansion. Inside the concrete? I could only see the floor scans, but why would there be anything like this on Rend? Did that belong to one of those rich bloody explorers? Did they bury the mansion in concrete to protect them from the elements or something? Did they bury the mansion in concrete to protect them from the elements, or something worse after what happened made it become abandoned? So damn strange. And it... I could barely read the numbers on the screen because the rugs were giving me weird interference. Cassie got two things immediately, a cookbook and a stepladder. Part of me wanted to get them all back just after that, but Marek wanted to know who owned this kind of place. 
Rivers said that wasn't as important as finding out why they weren't here anymore. And not even that was as important to me as getting all of them back. And uh, me not getting eaten. I couldn't see much of what the room looked like. River told me it was bookshelves. The big staircase at the end. I'd never heard anything like it. Well, I mean in context, sure, where mansions are supposed to be. But this is a moon. A dangerous, nasty, monster-filled moon. They went off up the stairs and to the right. Marek went left, again. I hated it when they split up. But they wanted the money. We needed it. We looked like we could get a good haul from what the scan said, and we wanted to have enough for a signal translator, a teleporter, and a television after quota. We knew it was a risk, but we took it slowly. Carefully. Mansions make weird noises. I kept hearing things in the wind outside and had to run to check, then dash back to the screen. It took hours. They managed to run back, Cassie and River together, while I kept watch on Marek, and then I'd have to tell him to stay put when they went back to the building, trying to keep eyes on anything that might be outside. There was a howl in the distance, but they got through the door before anything showed up. It was... it was... going okay. I began to think maybe we'd been worried about nothing and the tails were just overblown to stop us from freezing bits of the ship off or dropping treasure in the snow. I felt... good. Guiding them. River was taking point, as they always tended to, and even though I wasn't with them, they made me feel safe just in the way they were, just... there. It was a little like being with them when I could follow them on the screen. I saw the way they moved and turned, the caution and the boldness. Subtle movements that they didn't even realise they broadcasted as I followed that blue dot that held so much more within it than a circle of pixels. And following the squelch of the walkie, I'd hear their voice, or Cassie's, asking for updates, or a door to be opened, or checking in on Marek. He was okay. He had been okay. Then he... He tells me something was patrolling. Marching. Weird and mechanical, like a, a giant toy. I don't know what happened next as he went radio silent, but I could see he was behind a shelf when the thing stopped. His walkie was still broadcasting though. I could see Marek turn. And it ran. It was hard to hear over the sounds of Marek moving, but it sounded like drums, a weird metal whistle. It was terrifying. I heard a deafening shot, saw Marek sprint and dive, could hear him trying to get away. In a panic, I radioed the others who immediately turned to try and get to him. I couldn't hear what- I, I think he pulled a poker from a fireplace and started slamming it into whatever this thing was. Metal, mechanical monster. I heard another loud bang. More thumps. I couldn't see them moving. In silence. Marek? I called him. Just harsh breaths, fading. My blood ran cold. Then, he radios back. Here. Got the fucker, he had a shotgun. Let me see if- I screamed, something was coming up to him fast, but he- He didn't turn in time. It grabbed him and all I could hear was the walkie drop to the floor before it carried him away somewhere and I, I lost his scan. I tried to tell them, Cassie and River. But they kept going. Cassie was insistent she'd find him. River didn't say anything. They got to the room and all they found was his stuff. The shotgun. The walkie, flashlight, and Polaroid camera. I didn't even know if that was loot or not, whether it was something he just found and wanted to keep. Cassie kept looking for where he'd gone. Whatever it was had taken him into a vent. She wanted to go after him, but River and I both knew what it meant when someone vanished. A lost asset. I wanted them to come back. They picked up Marek's things between them and started returning. My paw tapped the floor, I couldn't look away. And then... Oh, no, 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 I can't even... Oh, another thing, too. Oh, run, 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 run was all I could think. They broke into a sprint, bursting through doors towards the main stairway, but there was... there was a turret there. They were going so fast I couldn't warn them while I was deactivating it. I heard the gun fire. Thumps. Cassie yelled. They both... They both made it through, but River was... River wasn't moving well. And there could be things outside, things that could follow blood. I had to be quick. I set the ship to auto-take-off with a timer and ran out to help. The wind stung my ears, even with the mask on, made my arms shake. But I'd be ready, ready to fend off anything that tried to get them. I met them in the path of lights. Something was coming from the snow behind us, so Cassie and I each took under one of River's arms to help them get to the ship. We set them down in the shower. 
I quickly grabbed the TZP inhalant, took their mask off and put it to their lips. They breathed. Deep. Slow. The shower was covered with blood. I looked to Cassie, who was still staring out of the door with the shotgun. The ship was about to leave. I tried to tell her to close it, but she... Instead, she looked round, said goodbye, and jumped out. I didn't even have time to stop her before the doors closed, and we took off. I collapsed against the shower door next to River and shook. I couldn't stop any of it. I saw all of these things happen, people taken away by monsters, friends lost on their way to fight them, and, and now the companion I... my companion, my closest friend, is here next to me with gunshot wounds. I... yes, a river. I had to take care of them. <laughs> Gods, they're heavy, though. I eased off their suit with their help. The inhalant was helping them regain strength, but I knew it wouldn't stop the wounds themselves. I think something in the company's rations helps us with it, but right now they were critically injured. I turned the shower on. And, um... I got... I got to see them. All of them. If I hadn't been so numb from losing Marek and Cassie staying behind, I would have noticed more, but I, I had to help them recover and stop the bleeding. I took my own suit off to tend to them, as my boots were filling with water, and around my neck I sounded like a waterbed, so I stripped off and we helped each other, or I helped them really, but they were also helping me by keeping going, and um, they're beautiful. Even under the blood, in the fire of anguished loss, they looked incredible. They leant against me, and I didn't mind. I held them up as best I could. I felt... I felt very shy, but they, um... They took me in their arms and we just... sat there together in the shower, with the water washing over us. I don't think I've ever felt so sad and so comforted at the same time. They put their arms around my chest, and I leant against theirs. And as the water ran out, we sat in the steam, in the smell of steel and blood. We, um, I helped bandage them up, felt their muscles under their fur, the gentle flexes of skin as I pressed the gauze to them, heard their soft breaths. Then we, um, then, um, we, um, we took all the bedding and put it on the floor, figured there was no point for bunks right now, so had a little cuddle puddle, I guess. <laughs> they, uh, I like the way they smell. I love it, I think. Tomorrow we, we're gonna try another moon. We're too late for any replacement, so it'll just be us. Hopefully we can make quota together. <laughs>